In this video we're going to discuss MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. This is CE1. Now show IP protocols shows us that OSPF is running on the CE router, but there is no MPLS configuration on the CE router. The CE router is running a basic version of OSPF, but it now has an OSPF neighbor relationship to the PE. The PE router is running multiple versions of OSPF. So we have neighbors in the global routing table using OSPF process one, as well as OSPF neighbors in the blue VRF. So we've configured gigabit zero one in the blue VRF. As you can see here, I now need to configure another instance of OSPF for the green VRF. So router OSPF three, VRF green. Router ID 172.16.1.1. Now notice we told that that's already in use. So the router is complaining because this IP address is already used by the blue VRF. So what we could do now is manually configure a separate router ID. And I'll just pick a number such as 172.16.1.100, even though that IP address isn't configured on the router. We need to then go on to the gigabit zero interface and type IP OSPF three area zero. So this is what the configuration looks like at the moment. We've got two VRFs configured. You can see that a neighbor relationship has been established on the gigabit zero two interface to a neighbor. We'll look at that in more detail in a moment. Gigabit zero zero is in the global routing table. MPLS is enabled on that interface. Gigabit zero one is in the blue VRF. Gigabit 02 is in the green VRF. They both have the same IP address, but that is allowed because they are in separate virtual routing and forwarding instances. OSPF process ID 2 is running on gigabit 01. OSPF process ID 3 is running on gigabit 02. Now OSPF requires separate process numbers for each VRF. Other routing protocols such as BGP and EIGRP use address families. So notice here's the OSPF process for blue, here's the OSPF process for green, here's the global OSPF routing protocol, here's BGP with the address family configured. So show IP OSPF neighbor. That shows us all our neighbor relationships. This is a global neighbor. This neighbor is in the green VRF, this neighbor is in the blue VRF. We could also do this, show IP OSPF one neighbor. That shows us process one neighbors, process two neighbors, and process three neighbors. Show IP route, this is our global routing table. Notice we don't see 172.16.1 in the global routing table. Show IP route a VRF blue. There is our blue VRF. And notice we have the loopback of CE1 in the blue VRF. So as an example, I can't ping this address in the global writing table. I need to use the command ping and specify the blue VRF. And then I can ping that loopback. That address is once again only available in the blue VRF. Now when we look at the green VRF, we don't see any routes at the moment. So let's see if CE2 is advertising any routes. So show IP OSPF neighbor. It's got a neighbor relationship to the PE. Show IP interface brief. There's no loopback configured on this router, so let's configure a loopback as follows. So show IP OSPF interface. 
and let's use brief rather, you can see that OSPF is running on the loopback and the gigabit zero, zero interface. So the loopback should now be advertised to the PE. Show IP route VRF green. Previously, we didn't see any OSPF routes here, but notice we now do. So again, if we wanna ping the loopback of CE1, we need to use the blue VRF. If we wanna ping the loopback of CE2, we need to use the green VRF. So that was the configuration on PE1. We need to do something similar on PE2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.